So now we've gone ahead and reinstalled our pressure and temperature access ports. We pipe threaded those in here. Again, we've made our connections here on the water side. We've braised our refrigerant connections. We're ready to re-insulate all the refrigerant connections and refrigerant tubing as well as the coaxial heat exchanger. Again, it's very important to make sure you insulate that because it's going to sweat like crazy when it gets into a condensing environment. It's also important to make sure that you have reinstalled the FP1 freeze protection sensor. Remember, we took that off right next to the TXV. Uh, it's got a clip that snaps it over the 3 8 inch refrigeration line and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to install a couple of zip ties over it to make sure we have good, er, good contact onto our refrigerant tube. So we have good accurate thermistor reading for our freeze protection. Now we're going to make sure that we hook up the reversing valve terminals. Remember we removed those to make sure that we didn't damage them during the brazing process. Now we can go ahead and replace the insulation over all the refrigerant tubing as well as the water connections to make sure that they don't sweat. It's important once you've replaced the filter dryer to make certain that you've in fact replaced the filter dryer only. The filter dryer is located down on the liquid line. Not to be confused with the muffler. Looks exactly like a filter dryer, has similar UL listings on it, but it is on the discharge side of the compressor. If it's not wrapped in foam tape and down low, but it's on the discharge side of the compressor, it is a muffler. Please make sure that you're only replacing a filter dryer, not the muffler. If you install a filter dryer in place of the muffler, you're going to have significant issues. So we've completed the installation. We've now finished wrapping the insulation around all the component parts that might sweat, including all the refrigerant tubing. So now we're ready to reassemble the cabinet, but more importantly, it's time to flush the coaxial heat exchanger. Remember, we dropped the fluid out so we could replace it, so it's only full of air at this point. We isolated the ground loop, so now you need to flush the coaxial heat exchanger. Please refer to our flushing video if you need further instructions. As previously mentioned, it's time to go ahead and put the cross members, the top and the sides back on. It's also time to go ahead and do a full startup and commissioning. Go through your IOM and make sure you're doing a full and complete performance check. Remember guys, don't give away your reputation. Do a full and complete startup. Don't cut any corners. Do it right the first time. Remember, you want to put some money in your pocket, and the last thing you want is a callback.